When I saw it, I couldn't believe it. I had never been with someone who had that. There, I understood why my uncle was so successful with women, he had many reasons, you understand. I will tell you how I got involved with my uncle, but first, let me ask you not to judge me. We are human, and these are things that can happen to anyone. I'm not going to lie, I haven't been with my husband in quite some time, and while some might think that's not enough of a reason to cheat on him, I have the same needs as any other woman. It all started when my uncle came to stay at home for a few days. He was looking for work and had nowhere to stay, so I offered him my house with the best of smiles, thinking it would only be for a few days until he found something stable. Let me tell you, my uncle had something that attracted women. It seems like he had something, and he knew exactly how to use it. I saw him in action more than once, flirting here and there, leaving the girls sighing and me wondering what it was about him that they liked so much. As for me, let me tell you that my relationship with my husband had been at a standstill for quite some time. Some might say that's not enough of an excuse, but who can judge another person's needs? I had mine, like any other woman. Things began to slowly deteriorate, at first, I barely noticed it. Small gestures of love and affection became less frequent, replaced by awkward silences and blank stares that said more than any of us were willing to admit. And then came the lack of privacy. I don't remember the last time we shared a moment, not just as roommates but as lovers. The nights became lonely times when I huddled under the covers, longing for those moments of passion. I tried to talk to him about what was happening, but he always found an excuse to avoid the conversation. I'm tired, I have a lot of work, tomorrow will be better, were the phrases that were repeated over and over again, like a mantra that he repeated to convince himself that everything was fine. And I, naive that I am, believed it. I wanted to believe that things would get better with time, that we were just going through a rough patch, and that we would go back to being the happy couple we once were. But time passed, and nothing changed, except the gap that opened between us more and more every day. So, can you blame me for seeking comfort in my uncle's arms, for searching for that missing spark in someone who was willing to give it to me, even if it was just for one night? Because let me tell you, when you're starving for love and attention, any crumb that falls from the table seems like a feast. I'm not trying to justify my actions, far from it. I know that what I did was wrong, that I betrayed my husband. But in that moment, in that moment of weakness, I just wanted to feel alive again. I wanted to remember what it was like to be a desired woman, even if it was only for a few hours. That was the precise moment where my uncle appeared, so I decided to get rid of all that accumulated tension with him, closing my eyes to the consequences and letting myself be carried away by the desire that burned within me. And yes, he was selfish, he was reckless, but he was also liberating because, for one night, I was able to forget about all the worries and problems with my husband. I was able to escape the reality of my life and feel alive again. My husband came home late from work, as usual, focused only on his problems and not even realizing what was happening under his own roof. And meanwhile, I was there, at home with my uncle. How about we grab something, my uncle suggested, with that mischievous smile that had always been his trademark. And I, naive that I am, accepted immediately, as if alcohol could erase all my problems. So we sat in the living room, with a couple of drinks in our hands and music playing in the background, desperately trying to forget all my business. We talked about nonsense and had a little fun. I was in this fantasy world we had created for ourselves, letting alcohol and music take us to dangerous places. For a moment, I was able to forget everything, my husband's lies and deceptions, and enjoy the moment with my uncle. It seemed like we had had too many drinks, the laughs became a little naughtier, the stares a little more intense, and the jokes, well, the jokes began to take a spicier turn. What started as innocent banter soon turned into innuendos, as if we were testing the limits of what was acceptable. I, silly me, got carried away by the emotion of the moment, ignoring the danger signs. There was something intoxicating in the way my uncle looked at me, in the way his words became softer and more seductive as the night wore on. It was as if we were dancing on the tightrope between right and wrong, between reason and desire, without worrying about the consequences. And I fell. I fell with my own weaknesses and repressed desires because, in a moment of madness, I let myself be carried away by the tension I had inside me, unleashing a moment of madness. 
At that moment, I forgot everything, my husband, my problems, my responsibilities. It was as if I suddenly exploded and let myself be carried away by that moment of weakness, unable to resist the only man who could solve my problems. I gave myself to him without reservation, letting alcohol take us to unknown places. But even in the midst of ecstasy, a part of me knew that this was wrong, that we were crossing a line. But in that moment, in that instant of debauchery, I couldn't worry about the consequences. I just wanted to feel alive. I wanted to remember what it was like to be a woman, even if it was with my uncle. So it was a moment I desperately needed. For a moment, I was immersed in an oasis where all my problems vanished, as if by magic. For a moment, I forgot about the tensions in my marriage, the lack of attention and intimacy that I had been suffering from for so long. For a moment, I put aside all worries. For a moment, I allowed myself to be selfish, letting myself be carried away by that moment of weakness, not worrying about what would come next. He was a needy soul, so after that moment with my uncle, before my husband returned home, we rushed to tidy up the living room, making it as presentable as possible. And although the truth was that it looked like a hurricane had passed through there, with empty alcohol bottles and clothes on the ground, and so with a little alcohol on me, and my heart still racing, I headed to the bathroom to take a shower. Because I needed to get away from it all for a moment. I needed to let the hot water wash away the guilt and confusion that was clinging to me at that moment. As the water fell over me, I felt incredibly good. It was as if each drop carried with it a little of the burden it had been carrying, as if it were releasing all the tension and buildup of problems that had been going on. I closed my eyes and let the warmth envelop my body, letting all my thoughts and worries disappear with the steam. For a moment, I allowed myself to feel light, free of the chains that had been binding me, free of the expectations and judgments that had been chasing me. And although I knew I couldn't stay in the shower forever, for a moment, I allowed myself to enjoy the feeling of being at peace with myself. Because after everything I'd been through, after all the difficult decisions I'd had to make, it was comforting to know that I could find a little peace of mind even in the midst of the chaos around me. For a moment, in the midst of the chaos and confusion that had invaded my life, I felt like a woman again. And my uncle, well, he had done what my husband hadn't done in a long time, he had awakened that passion which had been dormant inside me for so long, reminding me what it was like to feel truly desired and valued. Yes, it was a moment of weakness. I cannot deny that, but it was also an incredibly liberating and rewarding time for me because, during those few hours, I was able to forget about all my worries and problems and just enjoy. My husband never found out what happened that night, we kept our adventure in silence, as if nothing had happened. But that night wasn't the only time I cheated on him. There were other times, other moments of weakness where I found myself seeking comfort and compassion in my uncle's arms, even though it was dangerous. I couldn't help but return to it again and again, as if I was trapped in an endless cycle of need. No, I don't regret what I did. I don't feel guilty for betraying my husband in that way because he deserved it, you know, for all the pain and anguish he had caused me, for all the lonely nights and tear-filled days I had spent at his side. So while he continued to immerse himself in his own problems and worries, I sought comfort wherever I could find it, even if it meant being unfaithful. Because at the end of the day, I was solely responsible for my own happiness, and if that meant seeking it outside of my marriage, then so be it. I know some people will judge me for my actions, but I don't care about that anymore. What I did was in search of my own happiness, my own inner peace, and that is something that no one can take away from from me. I wonder, what do you think about what happened? Do you think what I did was wrong? Do you think betraying my husband like that was a selfish act? Or do you think he had the right to seek comfort from another man? Maybe what I did wasn't right. Maybe I should have looked for a different solution to my problems instead of seeking comfort in the arms of another man. But I also know that life is complicated, and that we all react differently to our problems, and in the midst of all that chaos, sometimes we get lost. I ask you to leave your comments, to share your thoughts about my story. I want to know what they think, how they feel when they hear what I have shared. If they agree or disagree with my actions because, at the end of the day, we all have our own experiences and perspectives, and I'm sure each of you will see my situation from a different angle. Perhaps some will judge me, while others will offer understanding and empathy, but whatever your opinion is, I want to hear it.